don't know why I did that. The first two should have been synced up. I could have just, anyways. You could have went off them. Gentlemen, welcome back to season four, episode three. If they only knew the math involved to make that conversation happen or comment We've happen. been here for an hour and we're just not recording. Oh my goodness, we're 20 minutes into this thing just now figured out what we're doing and who we're at. Yeah. So, and who's this guy? Who we're at. <laughs> who we're at. Who we're at, huh? <laughs> I'm trying to make you comfortable. Oh, this is going to be a good one. I'm trying to make you comfortable. <laughs> there you go. Because... Uh, this has not been going well so far. It's been going very well. I spent two hours getting this set up, and, uh, well, we're here. We're, we're here. here. Hopefully we got audio. Hopefully we got some video. And uh, we, are, well, we are blessed. How fortunate are we? <laughs> so weird choice of words for me. How, cho- how fortunate are we to have you here? Pretty fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> we have last minute scheduling here today, but... Uh... I wish we could explain the chaos behind the scenes, oh, but know. nobody knows and nobody cares. Yeah. So chaos behind the scenes is a good channel name. That is a good channel name, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. But that's what we should change but, the uh, podcast to: chaos behind the scenes. Chaos behind the scenes. Yeah. Would that make uh, Would I'll that take, make any sense at all? I'll take my ten ten percent on that. Ten <laughs> percent. You got a second but channel going now. We had Captain Cleman on uh, season three, one of the last episodes. Yes. And We're talking it, about chaos on the scenes. Yeah, chaos <laughs> on the scenes. <laughs> he wasn't on the camera. <laughs> Couldn't and the audio him. wasn't real well, so oh my goodness. we thought due diligence, uh, we'd bring him back on again. Who all was even on that one? Was it was Jason? Was me and you, Jason? Jason, and Bob, Mike, Bill, Bob. Oh yeah, George. the guy we never called the same name mm-hmm. once. Yeah, that mm-hmm. turned into a fun little challenge. Yeah, it was a challenge. You guys will have to go back and watch. And that. then uh, Jason had another friend. With so us. the the kicker was that was a really fun episode. Yes, it was. But it was supposed to be about Captain Cleman. I think all he did was sit in the corner and laughed at us. It was a lot of fun, though. It was a (laughs) good time. Everybody's mean in the comments. It's like, that's the most fun I've had in a long time. I enjoyed it. Well, we said this before. Every year we're like, do we keep going on with the podcast? And uh, we keep getting requests for it. And it is kind of cool to go into uh, long format, you know, elaborating on a particular topic or something. Or in situations like we got today, a lot of people want to know the ins and outs of our relationships, how they come to be. And uh, that sounded weird. They know what I mean. Fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> and where's been, where, where, where we, how we ended up where we're at today? How's that sound? Sure. I'm going to get my fancy footwear in this. Do you remember? Shirt. We're just jumping, <laughs> jumping the rails real quick. But do you remember the first time we went to World of Concrete and Josh was telling everybody you were his partner? And there's a big miscommunication the whole time. Oh, wow. That could go wrong in yeah. Vegas. Yeah, yeah that yeah. could go wrong real well. So we had Josh on the podcast. Josh was my <laughs> previous business partner. And whenever we had the construction business, and we'll get into this a little bit later, but Cleman was one of our main, was our first, first employee and one of our main employees for the majority of the tender of the company. But uh, we decided we are going to go out to Vegas. Was it just me, you, and Josh? I, uh, Josh Clark might have been there, too. I can't remember. Josh Clark did go one year. I don't know if it's that year or not. Yeah. I do know it was the first year because I went the first year by myself because Josh thought it was a stupid idea. I do remember that. And then I come back with all these neat ideas and neat stuff and Josh decided it was a good idea so he went the next year which made it a lot easier to get it paid for. But uh, (laughs) anyways, we decided we're going to take Cleveland with us. We're walking around this show and Josh is all amped up about being there he's got this strategy on blackjack and <laughs> he's gonna make the whole him. flight down he's, yeah, he's, he's reading this yeah. read a <laughs> encyclopedia on blackjack to, <laughs> we get to the wall of concrete and like seven or eight booths in he's like y'all this is my partner mike this is my partner mike and every time he would say it that person would stare and look at me like <laughs> <laughs> okay. and uh I finally told Josh, I said, just for the sake of everybody involved, you might want to put business in front of that yeah, partner yeah, box. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was enjoying it. <laughs> it was like, like, I have no issues with that whatsoever, but that's not the really nature of our partnership. I'm just want to be clear on that. that so. Well, I think being the uh, man behind the scenes went to World of Concrete with you one time. I don't know if we <sighs> remember much of it, but we were there, I think. Yeah. <laughs> you missed good Man time. Behind the Scenes at Con Expo. Oh, that'd been a good one. That was uh that was a I wouldn't to babysit him. No, and Matt did not do his Matt failed as miserably as you failed. Oh boy. You were there for that. Yeah. <laughs> he did fine. <laughs> <laughs> he did fine. 
<laughs> Everything was fine. Well, is that Webster's de- definition of fine or your definition what of fine? What happens in Vegas stays in we Vegas. We were together, and he was always there the next morning when I woke up. Right. <laughs> okay. He did fine because Cleveland's a loner and just abandoned ship on him. Yeah. <laughs> he is an adult. Well, that's what I was told anyway. Um, oh. So, uh, Captain Cleveland. What's going on, man? Derby. Derby resident now. Derby resident. So yeah. how, how far are we going to back this up? Yeah. How far, <laughs> how, how, how far do you want to back it up, Mike? <laughs> oh, there's so many appropriate just, comments that come, come out, right? So you guys were prior friends before no. Simon Harris? No. No, he come I on got forced Simon to spend time with him. It's literally yeah. what happened. Yeah. But you worked together at, uh, at Bernie. Like I said, before. I got forced to spend yeah. time oh, with him. Okay. First time, and I think I can't remember if I told this last time. First time I met Mike. <laughs> I didn't even know who he was. Yep. I was in the Wendy's drive thru. Yes. And this, this Dodge Dakota. Oh, this is one of the stories I was wondering if. This out. Dodge Dakota just comes rolling across the parking lot at the Wendy's drive thru and pings the car in front of me in the drive thru. She's honking the whole time trying to tell him to stop. Well, there's nobody in it, okay? It's just a ghost truck rolling. So I have to go inside and be like, hey, whose Dodge Dakota is this? It was this fella's. And then, like a week later, I start working at Bernie's and I walk in. And I'm like, hey, there's that guy. Oh boy. I heard a fun fact that. about that. It was a no-fault accident because there wasn't a driver in the truck. Hey, that worked. How can they blame it on nobody? Anybody, nobody was she, in? And she had all kinds of time. I bet it was a solid minute of this. Oh, yeah. That truck I mean, went nowhere free, fast, even no. on its own. No. <laughs> That's the same truck we ran into the granny bin down there. Yes. That's all of it. Oh, yeah, man, we could get... Boy. That's the same truck Carly took over the hill with a bicycle helmet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It was really funny. You know Carly, these people don't know yeah. Carly Jones. You imagine Carly oh. Jones oh, yeah. strapped in a Dodge Dakota with no bed on it, no engine. Did it have the engine in it yet? It didn't run up it. It did yet. not have the engine. We shoved them off the front hill. With a bicycle helmet. Bicycle with a bicycle helmet, helmet on it. He got down to the first little divot, and we thought the truck was going to end up because the fuel <laughs> tank came out, and he about ramped over the back tire. <laughs> <laughs> went over. To- <laughs> first 50 feet, feet was hilarious. Oh, it was. So the then- last 100 yards, we thought we committed murder. <laughs> <laughs> we were, Sorry to get scared. We, we, we were concerned. Yeah. And then it just stopped at the bottom, and we're all like, is he getting out? You know? <laughs> did, he, did he fall? <laughs> door fell off, and he fell out? <laughs> he wasn't dead again. Yeah. So... Yep. All right, so long story short, that is where Cleman and I, so your your dad and my grandpa, known each other for years, kind oh, of yeah. did some business together. Yeah. Our families were familiar with each other, but we weren't familiar with each other. Right. I guess would be the best way to put it. Uh, at the time, I was the lead carpenter for a company in town, uh, Bernie, Bauer, Bauer Construction, mm-hmm. great guy, mm-hmm. awesome. taught us both a lot. Do you get him on a podcast here? No, and I'm actually working in his house right now. Are you really? Yeah, you got to get I got to get Bernie on here. Yeah. Bernie's a, he would do it. Oh, yeah, and absolutely. He, man, he's just a really neat guy. Really neat guy. Very, very fortunate to be able to work with him for as long as what I did. So, um, so anyways, I was working at Bernie's. I'd been there. I worked there during high school. Left, went and did the back truck and stuff, did a few other things, come back to Bernie's, and by the time you come around, I'd worked up to a lead carpenter. I don't remember who left or what the shuffle was. I don't know if it was Chris or Ryan or... I can't remember who left, what, yeah. What, what it was, but you come in as summer help. Right. And you were in high school, right? I was, yeah, started in high school. And the way Bernie had the yeah. company set up was there was basically three of us lead carpenters, and all three of us lead carpenters would get a summer helper. Summer helper. helper. And then we might be on jobs by ourselves, or we might be on jobs together. Bernie did a really good job of coordinating everybody. So yeah, yeah. Um, the funny part about this is <clears throat> I started off with Cleman. He was my summer helper. I didn't have much hope in him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he left and went to college. You know who my next summer helper was? Mr. Millennium. Really? Yeah. Boy, you keep them close. I do, and I had a lot more faith in Cleveland after I worked with Matt. (laughs) (laughs) Which is just kind of funny how here we are all these years later and we're still all intertwined. And one's building a boat out of wood and one's building a castle out of wood. Well, you know, what are you going to do, Chris? (laughs) (laughs) And now you know why I was the lead carpenter. I was wondering where you went wrong. (laughs) Or where did I go right? Yeah. Yeah. But so you worked. I'm trying to remember. You worked. Was it two summers in high school, and then you that's kinda, what I was just trying. To and think. then I think you were. You kind of cut back full time through your college years. Yeah, because I was driving. I mean, I was. I had my license. Yeah. So I was driving. So it was probably 16 or 17. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's probably two years in high school summer, and then coming back 
summers and breaks and stuff mm-hmm. yeah. through through college. And then well, when I went to Vincennes, I was working pretty much full time. Yeah, because I'd, I'd commute back. So long story short, you worked, I think we worked two summers together, <clears throat> and then uh, through the way your schooling worked out, you ended up coming back like in March, was it March? Yeah, probably. Somewhere around there. Yeah. And then you pretty much worked, we pretty much worked three three years there, pretty much full time together? I'd say, yeah, every bit of it, every bit of it. Some pretty good stories come out of there for sure over the years. Oh, oh man. Yeah. It, <laughs> hey, what, somebody took the wrong truck. <laughs> Oh, Somebody jumped, jumped off the roof. Oh, yeah, that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You remember... <laughs> the stories. The Bernie, best stories. Maybe been... we shouldn't have Bernie on the podcast, because these stories from Bernie's could go on for years. He knows. Bernie knows. <laughs> Bernie was the instigator a lot of times. He was the punchline a lot of times, because he always had the best responses. You know what <laughs> I mean? He'd always tell you, see you around if you don't go square. <laughs> <laughs> the best stories are when we were renovating his new shop. Oh my gosh. I remember when he was like, you need to tear up the subfloor inside. And then you went and rented a mini excavator. I ripped the old back wall off and drove it in the building. <laughs> Got it inside this building with the mini excavator. He goes, what are you doing? And I said, you said rip the subfloor out. And he said, by hand. I said, I am. <laughs> <laughs> he said, there's a big hole in the building. I said, well, your plan showed an addition going right there. Oh, well, really? yeah, it worked. <laughs> it worked out well. Like he could, like he was so mad I ripped the whole back of his building off, but he had no argument why it wasn't a good idea. Because <laughs> yeah. he didn't think of it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Bernie was, it is great. I'm not yeah. Sure oh, yeah. Was, but. Bernie's great, man. Because I, yeah. I didn't have any experience on Star Deck. No construction experience no. at no. all. Oh, I can vouch for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No denying that. And it was great, though. I mean, Bernie really took me under his wing and, and was just patient with me. And he has the same kind of, I don't even want to say boss style, but leadership style that you do is just let the guy work, let him fail, yeah. let him figure it out. Yeah, That's and great. I think one thing, I was that way a little bit, but I think one thing Bernie instilled confidence in me is, is Bernie never thought like everybody else. Like, just because you did it that way don't mean he's going to do it that way. Like, he was always trying to reinvent the wheel. And we've joked about this before. Bernie had had 100 horrific ideas. And we just learned to go with them. Yeah, like, yeah. you ain't going to talk him out of it. Yep. You just got pretty yeah. wrong. But by golly, that son of a gun would come up with one idea. One and you're idea. like, holy shit. There's still tricks that I use to this <clears> day <throat> that he taught me. And it's just kind of the trial and error method. Yep. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know, man. I, I uh, I think I worked for Bernie seven years between high school and after high school, five years full-time, two years part-time, and uh, probably the best education I ever got. Yeah. And still to this day, got a good relationship with Bernie. We're actually yep, working at his working house. Still working there now, you still said, yeah. yeah. Well, I can remember you left to start your business, how supportive he was of that. Yeah, he, he was. was. He, he Yes, yeah. I cannot say he wasn't, and he turned around and hired me as a subcontractor, and he's always answered the phone if I need him. He's, uh, uh, yeah, I can't say enough good things about Bernie. Yep. But. He ruined my plans there. That's right. Really because <coughs> I, I love, the whole reason I was like being on your crew versus, you know, Chris Ford did like a lot of the trim stuff and then yeah. the boring stuff, whatever. Stuff I didn't, I shouldn't say boring, stuff I didn't like. Yeah. You were always doing kind of excavation, the rough framing, the demolition, stuff I enjoy. Jacking up houses. Jacking up houses. Yeah. I mean, we, he always took on jobs as like, We've never done it before, but how hard could it be? No, kind and of have no plan when you take no the job plan. home. Yeah. I love that. It's the same yeah. thing we do with everything now. But you're like, yeah, I'm leaving to start my own company. I was like, fantastic, great. I can slide into this role that Mike was. I can be crew lead and yeah, I can start doing all this stuff, yeah. you know. And then Mike leaves and Bernie hires him for all that crap. And I'm like, shit. <laughs> there goes Sub, subcontracts yeah. out, huh? Yeah. There goes my plan. So if I remember right, and correct me if I'm wrong, about the same time I left Bernie's, you graduated college. Yeah, that's probably right. Or maybe, or did you work for me one year as summer help? Because I think I worked for you as one year as summer help. Because you were a Jarbo, my brother-in-law. Yeah, yeah, we st- yeah we started a fence company. <laughs> it went really well. Yeah, we had a fence company. I was just um, no, I worked for stuff. you at least at least for one summer because that was at my fourth college I went to. I think. <laughs> I didn't get along with We could do a whole podcast. You're real educated then, ain't you? I'm very educated. You got any opinions or questions about colleges in Indiana? I I can tell you about five of them, at least. Okay. 
I didn't get along with college very well. I quit after the first one. First year, <laughs> first one, I was done with that. I don't know if all Cleveland's quits were voluntary. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Some of them might have been mandatory. Well, mine was mandatory because I got a letter asked not to come back again. <laughs> it wasn't for academic purposes. Oh, okay. We're going to leave that yeah. one alone. Yeah, we'll, leave, we'll leave that alone for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I worked a summer, maybe two summers for you. I'll never summer. forget you come back like the middle of March or something. I'm like, what are you doing here? You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> sure enough, I've seen that, right? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll fill you in. Later. Okay. It all worked out. Everything worked out. <laughs> it worked out all right. Look at me now. Yeah. yeah. Look at you yeah. now. Yeah. yeah, you're on the other side of I it. I just, I keep telling Chelsea, like, I hope neither one of the kids wants to go there for college. Because you know? I'm just going to have to, <laughs> gonna gonna have to drop them off at the border <laughs> and be like, good luck. Are you, you know? still banned from there? As far as I know. Really? Yeah. I should call him. You should call him. I should do. I should do an episode. You on should it. do an episode on that. <laughs> There's got to be a statute of limitations by now that's succeeding. You would think so, wouldn't it? Surely, yeah. You may want to get a lawyer involved before you get <laughs> phone calls. You might be looking for a better summer job. That's the intro to the video. <laughs> oh, where's my lawyer today? Welcome to the video. <laughs> yep. Well, all right, we're getting off track here. So, so once you quit, went on your own way. How long did it take? You to leave Bernie well, to go there. See, I'm trying to remember because I worked a whole year at Bernie's, kind of in transition. I was, uh-huh. Bernie was really good to me, so I made sure I was good to Bernie. And I told him a year in advance. I kind of got a plan. This is what I'm going to do. And he says, "Well, if you get a job, let me know. I'll let you off. And then, if you don't have anything yeah. going, yep. come back." And I worked probably a summer, a fall, and a winter like that. And then going into the following spring. I kind of knew I had enough work. To keep you going. That was a house we redid for Bernie where it burned down. We put that basement in. Yep. Um, yep. That was kind of the catapult. That once I got that job, which Bernie gave me that job, and then we did Josh Clark's house, which is what really launched us. Yeah. The, it kind of just took off. Mm-hmm. And that, I, I want to say that was in the springtime, and you were coming back from yeah, college. I, I didn't work for it in Josh Clark's house. I yeah, because we did that one through the winter. Yeah. And I want to say you had a decision to make whenever you come back from college that summer, whether to go work for Bernie or me. Yeah. And you chose to come come help me. Well, yeah. I mean, with the pay and the benefits, you know, it was a no-brainer. Yeah. It was the company. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, for my brother-in-law helped us for a little bit, but for a year and a half or better, two years, it was just me and you. Yeah. Pro- I mean, probably. I'd say that's right. <clears throat> God, I wish we had YouTube back then so we can remember this stuff more accurately. Yeah, I'd say that was right. I mean, well, I wasn't you YouTubing back then? <clears throat> not, not well, that far this back. Was, this was, far this back, was no. probably five years before you did the first early videos on your channel. Yeah, I would say because I know Mike worked there for a while when we had the fence company. I know well both Shapers came through. Yep. Isaac worked for his full time. I want to say when you started getting full time employ- mm-hmm. more full time employees is when we started doing Jarbo's house. Is kind of what I'm remembering. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Grabby's was the first one. And then we went to uh, up there on Vista Ridge. Yeah. And then we went to that one back there on the uh, Utopia Road, whatever it is. Yep. Across from the other ICF house. Yep. This is just us recollecting. We're not right telling these yeah, stories yeah, here. We got, we got real distracted. So. Uh, listen, we've known each other for a long time. We have. 2000. Three-ish, probably. I'm gonna say that. Final answer. I've known him long in my life. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. So, so you, <laughs> but you end up being crew leader for 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 him for a while then. Yeah. So there's a lot of transitions that went on. Is yeah. is I transitioned in. I started the business. I really wanted to be in the excavating world. This is probably 2007 ish. Mm-hmm. I really wanted to be in the excavating world. I didn't have the money, the capital to buy the equipment. I think at that time I just had the little U35, U35. The little U35 yep. Kubota. Your pickup truck and the gooseneck. Yep. Pickup truck and a gooseneck. That's all I had. Um, where I kind of found a niche at was these ICF because Eric Schaefer uh, got us, got me kind of turned on this ICF <laughs> stuff. It's something that I could do, and I didn't have to go buy a bunch of expensive forms. <laughs> <clears throat> it was um, there was a market for it. I could see there was a market for it. Kind of started going down that road, and then uh, we built the first house we were talking about all the way up with ICF, which was Josh Clark's, once people seen it in person. And we just started getting a lot of phone calls, and I may be speeding through some stuff here. Stop me if you want to talk on something, but it got out of my control really fast. I mean, next thing you know, 
it was 2008 everybody's crashing it's a recession we yeah. had a whole bunch of work yeah i couldn't keep i couldn't keep up with everything going on and um that's where josh harris my business partner come into play well uh, also you have a set of strengths you have a, a big set of strengths organization and bookkeeping Organization is, is a strength. Paperwork organization, right, is not a strength. <laughs> right, and I've never been shy about that. No, I no. If I would, I would one hundred percent rather be out in the mud, tromping around. Oh, absolutely. Rolling around on the absolutely. ground, freezing my butt off, sweating my butt off, than spend one day in a climate control office. Yes. Yeah. Well, and then you get to that point where you're doing work and you're out there in the mud working and then you got customers calling they want bids they want quotes well and that's the that's the thing i still struggle with today because we've kind of retro back a little bit more is i like doing the work mm -hmm. i don't like dealing with yep. not it's not that i don't like dealing with customers i like my customers but i don't like the phone call of hey can you come look at this hey what do you think about this hey give me options on this i just want to show up and work yeah right and that's kind of what that's kind of where Josh Harris come into play because he had a, a, a degree in business. Mm -hmm. He had zero interest in being out in the field. Mm -hmm. He hung his degree on the office wall down there for him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and he made sure we all knew where it was hanging at. But he had zero interest in being out in the field. Now, I'll give him credit. If we asked him to come out and do something, if he needed to learn something, he would show up. He would. <clears throat> but, he didn't ask often, but he would. And there's no way at the time I could afford somebody of Yeah his qualifications to run the business side of things that as you far, could pay out right right as far as the the right. bidding the, the taxes the paperwork yeah. the meeting with customers because if you're building if you're building a house it ain't hey let's go look at this backyard it's uh it's three or four months worth of meetings of what kind of cabinets do you want what oh, kind yeah. of floors do you want where are you going to build what kind Organized of setting? all the subcontractors getting all everything on the so side. Long as that's how Josh come on board. We've kind of covered this in a little bit of the podcast we did with Josh, but Josh come on board, and that's kind of when the company kind of went to a little bit of a next level because it was this little unorganized, small excavating business popping yeah. in some basements to a little bit more of a legit construction company. And I stopped, we stopped operating underneath the Simon C and E umbrella, and we started operating underneath the Simon Harris umbrella. Yeah. And hanging it on the side of the building. It's still down there. Still down there. <laughs> still down there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's where Cleveland kind of started shining a little bit because we were doing, we had multiple things going on at the time. So me and you worked less together on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. And you kind of turned into having your own little crew. and Yeah. Um, Which was fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah. You were going through and doing a lot of the excavating, digging the basements, pouring the footers, pouring the walls. Yeah. A lot of the ICF and dirt work. Yeah. I mean, we'd show up, you, me, Josh, customer only me. We kind of mark things out, make sure everything was the way the customer wanted, right? And then you'd go somewhere. And so should we backtrack and talk about how we got you to that point? Because I can think of a lot of stories like trucks and ponds. You can't still blame me for the truck and the pond. Listen, if this is a is this hooked up to anything? It's a handle. No. Tool, if this is the truck tool, and this tool, is me in the I cab feel. and this is Mike on a dozer. And Mike's pulling me on a dozer. It's a podcast. I can't see you. And this, oh, it's a podcast. <laughs> In my hand, I'm holding. No, okay, that's not going to work. <laughs> when you're in the cab of the truck getting pulled by a dozer, you're just there. I'm just there. Been there, done that. I'm just there to let you know the cab is still attached to what you're pulling. Okay? And when you heard the glug, 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 you knew it was underwater at that point. One time. You drive a truck in a pond one time. I thought that was a mirror. <laughs> you know, I like how you're like, the pond's not the problem. But is the pond still there? The pond's gone. The pond's the gone. gone. Time's, time's changed, please. Yeah, because it was My a wife said I had to go. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. because it was a problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. boy. No, it, yeah, that went well. That went well. <laughs> I'm trying to think. What was the time I got mad at you and threw all your tools out in the hayfield? Oh, uh, we were at Bernie's brother-in-law's, uncle in -law's? No, it was at uh, Andrew Terry down there on the, remember that little big house that's up against the... Oh, yeah, I do. How <laughs> could you forget Andrew Terry? Yeah, yep. And he threw all my, he threw all my tools. But when you say all tools, okay, like, ten snips, a speed square, and a pencil. Is that all you had, yeah, Ben? I, I, didn't have, I, I didn't forgot have what he tools. said, but he pissed me off. 
Yeah. So I started taking mm-hmm. his tools and just chucking them out in the hay field to keep him entertained for a while. Mm-hmm. I mean, the hay wasn't cut. Yeah. Was, oh, wow. I, yeah. It took me. <laughs> That's like a scavenger hunt. <laughs> it was. You found I, I was a very mouthy <laughs> child. Still am as an adult. I'm just more witted with my quips than I used to be. <laughs> Contained it a little bit. <laughs> I was very mouthy, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Do you remember we were... Gosh, there's no way we can keep this on the rails. Remember we were roughing... I can't remember who owned it at the time, but it's that house up behind Papa John's. Yeah, that was John Allen's house. John Allen's right. He lived there at the time. Yeah. And we were packing shingles up that roof. And I fired his stepson. Yeah, you fired Bernie's stepson. I remember that. That went over well. Which, that was fine. It was deserved. And then Bernie was going to show us up on packing shingles. <laughs> you remember that? And <laughs> I mean... Oh, and he's like, well, you guys got under control. They just- <laughs> yeah, he's going to show us how to pack shingles. He comes up. It was like an 8-12 pitch rip, and he he was getting that ass percent of all these uh, walk boards out. Uh-huh. He says, you just got to put your heel into it and commit. <laughs> comes up there. Slips <laughs> off. I mean, just, I uh, weigh him on the roof. <laughs> Sounds like you guys got it. He just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> God love him. And then, so uh, you weren't there. I remember whenever I about broke my back trying to save him from falling off that roof up there in Berkeley Hills. He was, no. he was walk- I was sitting on the ridge. He was walking the ridge, and he went to go down. I don't know what he was doing. He was walking down the wreck, hanging on the side, took off slipping and sliding. And I went to grab him, and somehow I ended up bent over backwards of the ridge and grabbed him back here, and he about pulled my back into it. I was off, <laughs> I was off work for like a week because I couldn't move. And this was somehow my fault. Well... You shouldn't have grabbed him, huh? Just let him go. <laughs> That's right. The next one will let your ass go. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. best one was whenever you weren't on this one. I can't remember. I can see the house yet. It was, and this was this is before you were even working there. We, it was uh, Judge McIntoffer's house. They're putting an addition on the back of the house. We popped this dormer out. Had the roof tore off. Had the roof frame back in. A big rainstorm come in. We were trying to get this tarp all over this thing. Two stories off the ground. It was... Uh, me and Nick and Ian and like I said, it's boy your time. Bernie hops on this tarp and he's gonna ride it down to the edge and staple it off. Well he never stopped right off the edge. Oh boy. <laughs> so we're all scrambling to get down there before we can even get to the ladder. Here comes Bernie cleaning back up and he's got like four leaf clover stuck in his eyebrows. <laughs> he planted in the ground. <laughs> oh, man. And we were all worried. Remember how he always had all them squeeze clamps on his uh <laughs> The squeeze clamps just going like a squeeze clamp explosion. Never know what you need them. They're handy. Oh, squeeze man. clamps at dental We're going to get way off. There was another time. Oh, man. You know what I was... We used to always have the Monday morning safety meetings. <laughs> oh, and yeah. they were the most random things oh, ever. Oh, boy. So this one was about heat stroke. If you start feeling clammy or sweaty, you're supposed to take all your clothes off and lay on the ground in a cool spot. I was on the roofing crew this summer. This is for you, too. <laughs> We're in the very back of this high-end subdivision over in Kentucky. And we can see... Um, we can see everybody coming in the entrance and we uh-huh. see Bernie pull in so we all run down the ground strip down to our underwear and we're laying underneath the tree in the front yard Bernie pulls up <laughs> Nick Grantzer goes I'm feeling clammy Bernie and Bernie just chucks our paychecks out and leaves he don't say nothing to us at just all leaves, huh? just leaves <laughs> I'm surprised he uh, paid you that day or what about whatever Nick remember Nick flipped his truck down there at the Y or whatever and the first question Bernie had was, is all of his tools in it? <laughs> I remember we lost like 32 sheets of OSB in the middle of the highway. <laughs> that was Nick. Uh, that was the other Nick. Oh. <laughs> that was Josh's brother, Nick. Yeah. All right, we are way mm-hmm. off subject. And Bernie's not like, here to defend himself. I would like yeah. to point out that a few minutes ago, Mike said he was very organized. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Should be thought about real quick. <laughs> no, but you know what I love? This all of a sudden turned into Bernie podcast. What I loved about him, I still love about him, he was always just lighthearted about it. It didn't yeah. matter what happened. He was always in a good mood. We were always going to find a solution. There was never a problem. There was always opportunity for a solution. And he had an answer for everything. He did, and I loved it. I loved it. That's why I loved working for him. I mean, it's, you and him have that in common. I, well, I think I do, too. I think anybody in this little circle does. I mean, we're, yeah. we're all kind of have that same person. Just going to put your head down and go at it. Yeah. 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 And about yeah. the... Because uh, we, we were working on... We were doing a, a porch roof somewhere some sometime. Trying to reinforce it and... This lady was on a tight budget. Bernie's trying to help her out, and he was trying to figure out how to get these joists on there. He's like, sometimes I just got to turn my brain off and let my hands do the work. <laughs> and that has saved my ass so many times because I'll just be staring at something, trying to figure out how I'm going to do it. It's and classic. once you dive into it, you just figure just, it out. Yeah, it's going to fall in place, yeah. yeah. Classic Bernie statement right there for sure. It is. Yep. 
I don't know, man. We had a good time working for Bernie. For yeah, oh, he's, we still, we both still see Bernie. Oh yeah, yeah. He's uh, we gotta get him on the podcast. Absolutely. These stories will make a whole lot more sense. More sense than Bernie was on the yeah. podcast. And I just want to hear his replies to us. I want to hear his side know. of the story of all the shenanigans going oh, on. Because between me, Ryan, and Chris, he had his hands full. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You remember Ryan cut through like, God love him, cut through like 12 electrical wires in a one foot satchel. <laughs> He's cut out his 12 foot opening in his house to go from the living room to the kitchen. He goes this far and cuts through 12 wires. <laughs> Bernie walks in and he goes, probably wouldn't make sense to move it over six inches on it. Yeah. <laughs> right now. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Uh, let's see. Where were we? So I worked for you. Okay, got that. Oh, I'm thinking about yeah. the, uh, the drive through window at McDonald's and Josh Clark. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many stories. Yeah. Oh, we, were, we, had to, we had to meet Donald's closed down. We just hired this new guy. And we had to move the drive through window like three feet. It was something ridiculous yeah. to meet a certain specification for McDonald's. And then if you know all the drive through window booths, they were so cramped. Uh-huh. And we had the FRP tore down. We had the ceiling tore down. There was like six of us trying to work in this little hole. I think I was trying to lay the block back. So Bernie sends the new guy out to build the window frame out in the parking lot. Takes all the measurements or whatever. He goes out there, and Josh is reluctant to do it. He wants to build it in place. And Bernie's like, the, the measurements are not going to change between here and the parking lot. Yeah, I was, we say new guy. He's yeah. not inexperienced. Not inexperienced. He was just new to our company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, and he's like, the, the, they're not going to change between here and the parking lot. So Josh goes out there and builds it, makes the classic rookie mistake of forgetting the minus three inches where the thickness of the sideboards come back in. And he's sitting there, clang, 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 and just cussing. Josh is looking at me. I'm looking past Josh, Bernie's standing behind him, and Josh is having to be, Measure thing is here in the parking lot. Measure thing is just going off. And I'm trying to get him to like shut down. Sure enough, Bernie just pulls up and pulls the state measure out. He goes, Yeah, they didn't change between here in the parking lot. <laughs> 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 oh, that's funny. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> this is why it would never work clean. Don't worry about taking a kayak because there's two sitting down there. No, right I there. picked them up Saturday. Really? Yeah, that's nice. what I thought. <laughs> <bitches. laughs> the other day they were still sitting down there. Hey. Backwater's going to get I them. I took them to my other property and put them in the bar. Okay. I'll just catch them downstream somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, no, that, that is a really cool trip going up. Yeah. Mm. Up through there. I think like, Chelsea and Sarah went up through there. Yeah. Oh, have they? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I like going up stream better than I do going down. Yeah, you can get on there. Sarah's too and take off. Yeah. Same thing. But yeah. All right. We're off. But no, so, yeah. so then I, I, Josh and I just butted heads. We didn't get along, which makes the job miserable. Yeah. Um, so I started looking for uh, other options. And then, so I started looking towards EMT into medic. Which, a little bit of history here, your family has a lot of. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of uh, your Some, uncle and your, your brother. Yeah, um, well, Uncle Gary is one of the main instigators of the original. So it's not like you just pulled this career right, out of you know, out of thin air. It's right. Uncle Gary, he'd been doing it for, gosh, I don't, well, say 40 years. He probably did it. But he was the main instigator in getting rescue and EMS started in Perry County. Right. He was one of the originals. Um, and then John, my brother John was a medic, has been a medic now for, I want to say, 30 years. It's a long time. It's, so it's, it's been in the family well, for a while. Yeah. And my other brother, Tony, was an EMT. He never worked. Well, he did work as an EMT, but his full-time career now is a, a lab tech. So still but you're still of, kind of in the medical industry. In the medical yeah. industry, yeah. yeah. So I was like, well, I, I kind of want to go into that. So I went and got my EMT and did that. And then I was talking to my brother and my uncle about going in to be medic. And uh, I was in the volunteer fire service at the time. And they said, maybe you ought to look towards a career in the fire service. So that's kind of why I started leaning that way. <laughs> What'd you drop? It's nothing important. No, I'll get it, Mike. Don't worry. <sighs> Save my bacon again. So... <laughs> Uh, so if I remember right, you that's left. A, uh, that's a heck of a career change, going from a carpenter digging holes to <laughs> well, you had a hot hands. That's what I was getting ready to say, though. He had a little bit of a transition period because his dad managed. It. He went to work for a company. His dad managed his maintenance. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Which yeah. he went from straight up construction to maintenance. Okay. Yeah. Which freed up some time for you to do. It did because well, we were constru- I mean, anybody in the trade knows. I mean, you're doing fifty. Five, sixty hour weeks probably yeah. when it's yeah, we hit Monday summertime. through Friday pretty hard. We never did work any weekends but we hit No, nothing too crazy. Nothing yeah. too crazy. But then when I went to do the maintenance thing, because so the the whole hiring process with the fire department, it can take up to two years. Right. It takes forever just to get on the list, and once you get on the list, the list is good for two years or so. So there's a big gap of I don't know what I'm gonna do in this time period. And things had kinda escalated between me and Josh, and I was just really looking for an out at that point, you know. Um so I went to work maintenance for a year, which was good because I learned a lot in that time period. I can change a water heater faster than you believe. You wouldn't believe how fast I can change a water heater. I think <laughs> it's uh, uh, worth pointing out, though, even through all these transitions, me and you never had any issues or lost no, contact no, no, with no, each other. No, 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 no. I mean, that's, that's the whole reason I wanted to get out of there because I was concerned that whatever friction Josh and I had was going to translate into right. you and I's relationship and I didn't want to be leading on bad terms with you right. you know what I mean because we were involved in stuff outside of work too because we were oh, the original yeah. president and vice president of the Derby Community Association the Derby. that's right that's right we got tricked and we got tricked good <laughs> they got us because even after Simon and Harris closed with your full time position you still worked yeah uh, for Simon C and Eve part time yeah yeah, because I, well, so every fireman has the second job just because our work schedule. You know, we work 10, 24 hour shifts a month, so that frees up a tremendous amount of time. And I had my CDL, thanks to you. Um, so I started driving for that bogus Schwarzer company. Well, even before that, whenever, um, whenever you were still working maintenance for Lincoln Hills. You'd still come back. Remember digging out all the stumps down here on the farm? Oh, yeah. That's you'd, right. You'd still come back and do random. If I had a random big project or a random project. <laughs> that's right. Do something. If you weren't working for Simon Harris, but Simon Harris and Simon C&E were running parallel to each other. So you'd still come back and. I do remember that. You'd, you'd still come back that. and catch some one-off random stuff here and there. Man. And we were still doing the uh, boom booms at that time, too. We were. We were still working for Melrose Pyrotechnics. Yeah. Yeah, which was a. Uh, that was a good time. It yeah, was. That's a interesting that pyrotechnics and the medics would go <laughs> one together. Well, you know, we just, <laughs> we had get a lot, all your fingers. I never, I, never, I never was into it like you and Chris were. Hmm. I enjoyed it just because I got to spend time with you guys. Yeah, and that was a lot of fun. But it kind of ran its course. It ran its course. It did. Well, it's like anything. It's the people you work with. 
You know? Yeah. Um, I think if it was just the, every time we did a show, it was me and you. Yeah. It was always a good time. And the smaller shows are more fun. The smaller shows are always more fun. Yeah. yeah. We got we got it kind of worked our way up the food chain where we were doing the big shows, and it was just it was a lot more work. As far as us shooting the stuff, we got less out of it because it was all electronic. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. And well, and just, the clients, you know, you go up to like Carmel Fest, clients are a little bit more high strung, which rightfully yeah. so, they've got a bunch more money in it. But mm-hmm. you go down to like a small county fair or something, it's still a lot of money to them, but they're just there. They're just glad you're there. They're just glad you're there. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we did that for, I don't know, I don't think I've ever talked about this on my YouTube. I, you've mentioned it once or twice, I think, but. We did that for 10 years? Yeah, heck, probably. On the side of all the other stuff? Yeah, Yeah. we'd always take off. It it was usually, it depended on where 4th of July fell, but usually it was like a four to six day window. You would take off a day or two early because you had your hazmats and you'd go haul haul and deliver. Yep. And then me and a couple other guys would usually straggle behind and come help you when it was time to set up. Usually we'd do three shows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, three shows. So basically, you'd have four days. Days mm-hmm. travel because you do one show a night and then yeah. head back. Well, anyway, and it, at the time, it was decent, decent money, decent little money. Yeah, it really wasn't bad. The money is not bad at all. No, really, because um, we got. I think at the time, and every company's different. I don't know what they do now, but at the time, I think it was like ten percent of show pay, yeah. and the show lead could split that up. So yeah, so whoever was in charge got divvied up. Who yeah, got, who got what? No, it was cool. It was definitely a really neat experience. And uh, like I said, that really wasn't my thing, but I still enjoyed it because I, you know, it was just yeah. something different. Yeah. Oh, and, it was, yeah. and it was a challenge. I enjoyed the challenge of it. Well, it's it just something off. different, you know. Yeah. You don't do it every day. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, that was a good time. I guess continuing on. So as uh, you, you and I split on good terms. I wouldn't even say we split. I just said you left to go do better things. I left to be happier. I say that. Better things. <laughs> Change of pace. But not for me. I mean, I got it. No, no, no. Yeah. no I get it. Yeah. And um, the, so, I think during that transition year where you were still at Lincoln Hills is when you were working with me some. And I think whenever you first joined the fire department, that may be whenever you went to do a little trucking on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Because, well, I had to. Yes. We're going to skip over some of that for legality purposes. But I had to make my separation from Derby yeah. for a couple of years. Right? Yeah, and then yeah, um, and then things kind of changed. You got seniority, so that ended up not being an issue. Right, yeah. Things changed. State laws changed. Uh, that worked out. But yeah, so I was driving a truck a little bit on the side, running for Vogus Forcer, running back and forth to East Canton, Ohio, and back. Plenty of time on the clock. Not. You know, definitely, definitely all the e-logs were accurate. No way that that truck ran as a mechanic being tested for three hours at the beginning of the drive. In the no <laughs> way any of that time that happened, you know. Uh, the pay was... You're giving the people all kinds of ideas out there right now, you know that? Well, I don't... No, I'm saying things that aren't possible. <laughs> These things don't work. They're not possible. Um, no way I carried shop of coveralls to look like a mechanic for three hours. <laughs> you know, that didn't happen. Um, so I was doing that... And it was it paid well, but it was obviously a little risky. Yeah. Um, and I ran into you down at the market one day, I think. Yeah. So uh, this would have been about 2018 ish, I believe. Um, and at this time, Josh and we covered this in the other podcast, so I don't want to go back and, and do this. But mm-hmm. Josh and I figured we we tried four or five different variations of Simon Harris construction and. <clears throat> we were successful at it. We made money, but no, one, neither one of us were on the track to be where we wanted to be. Josh had other opportunities. I had other ideas. We split. Josh and I are still good friends. We just worked for Josh last week, so mm-hmm. it's not like that was a, a bad thing. But long story short, Josh took a paying job. Well, I guess it wasn't really a corporate job. You know where he went. I don't know how yeah. to say that. Yeah. It was. It was a. Yeah. He was no longer self-employed. Yeah. There you go. Way to put yep. that? He took a job. Um, had a salary to him. Yeah, I decided to uh, continue on down the self-employment route, and I've covered this in podcasts before too. I was burnt out between running Simon C and on the side, running. Josh and I had two companies. We had Simon Harris Construction. We had Simon Harris Development. We had a lot of rental properties, a lot of different things. We had a lot of employees. We had a great employees over the years, but good or bad they're just they take time and energy to manage mm-hmm. absolutely yeah. 
um, I was just done. Uh, that's where I kind of 2018, 2019. Um, that's whenever I <clears throat> that's whenever I went back on my own. Simon Harris Construction shut down over the course of the next year. Simon Harris Development shut down over the course of the next year. Josh went on. I stayed with Simon C&E. Uh, I was pretty ecstatic to be pretty low-key. And uh, going back to my previous problem I had before I teamed up with Josh, things got out of control really damn fast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have never advertised for work a day in my life and probably turn down more work than I take on. It's oh, yeah. just, it's, uh, word, you know, Grandpa yeah. said word of mouth the best. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Best advertiser absolutely. you can ever have. Been very fortunate to have a lot of good customers over the years. But as start, things started building back up, started ramping back up, that stretch right in there from probably 2018 to 2016 was probably the farthest you and I drifted apart. I would say so, yeah. I mean, you were still living here in Derby. You were doing your thing, driving the truck, working around a whole lot. I was kind of transitioning and everything around. We both had kids and all that other stuff going on. Yeah. We randomly ran into each other in the market one day, kind of asked you what you were doing, told you what I had going on, and you're like, yeah. 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 And that's, if you go way back on my channel, so I should mention in 2018, the very end of 2018, that's when I decided to start YouTube. Oh, if you guys don't know, he has a YouTube channel. It's called a Dirt Perfect. I didn't know if they knew. Just shout out. <laughs> Glad you got the bases covered here. Got, you finally got it in there, didn't we? <laughs> He's not getting pl paid for mm -hmm. sponsor plugs. Uh, so let's back up. Let's, let's take the train back for a second. Was it the last year and a half or the last two years you worked for me? Oh, it's got to be at least two years. Has it? No, I'm talking about whenever you started your first YouTube channel. Oh, 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 Whew. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at the videos, honestly. Um, I think oh, I think it was the last year because Clint was working with us at the time. Yeah. Yeah, Clint was. Yeah, okay, so Clint was with us. Yeah. It had to be the last year then. Yeah. So we have a mutual friend, Logan Wade. Yeah. Um, he was doing YouTube pretty hot and heavy at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you come to me said you'd like to start filming some stuff on the job. Yeah. Uh, I think my exact words were fine. Just kind of... As long as it doesn't get in the way. As long as it doesn't right. get in the way. Right. You, uh, you posted your first video 15 years ago. Oh, wow. That was a Melrose video, though, wasn't it? Columbus, Indiana Fireworks. Yeah. And then the first dirt work was a Case 1450 10 years ago. You built a pond back here pushing pile of ash, I believe. Yeah, I was Andy's... Behind the house. Yeah, Andy's yeah, Andy's house. And then insulated uh, concrete forms 10 years ago. Okay. So, That's crazy. So it's been 2013. Oh <laughs> I don't like this at all. But so, I'll, I'll tag on to that, though, before I started, because Wade was doing one. Wade was doing it. And having a good time with it. It looked fun. And I was thinking, well, how could I do something excavation-wise? Because this was before... This was a different YouTube. Yeah, this that's... Was not uh, edited video. Yeah, so... You didn't have... I mean, you had subscribers, but you yeah. didn't... You didn't post regularly. It wasn't that kind of a no, thing yet. It was, uh, it was a whole that big. different world. Internet wasn't even that big. Yeah. yeah, it was a whole different thing. So it was just you posted things you thought were cool. Yeah. It could be a two-minute clip. could be a five-minute clip. Really yeah. not edited. Um, and I saw this video of this fella. I remember this. There's this guy running this big, long-reach cat to dredge out this channel. And he had to wait for the cat mechanic to show up and switch the controls because he didn't know how to switch the controls. And I thought, if this fella can have this, I think he had 40,000 subs at the time. 27. 27,000 subs at the time. If this fella can have this many views and he doesn't even know how to switch controls because <laughs> I know how to switch controls, then I can do it. How many has he got now? Six, 670. <laughs> Somewhere in there. What's big? Really? <laughs> yeah. That was the, yeah. Wow. And I was like, you know what, if this guy can do it, I can do it. I remember you showing me his first videos. I think he was dredging a pond. Imagine that. Yeah. And I'm like, from, <laughs> how do I want to say this? From a guy that understands what he is doing, I was not extremely impressed. Uh-huh. But the visual of what he was doing, yeah. not knowing what he was doing, yeah. uh -huh, looked cool. And I'm like, yeah, that's pretty damn interesting. Oh, but I'm bored and there's 30 minutes of the video left. <laughs> yeah. 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 <clears throat> but I mean kudos to Chris he yeah. is the original 
Oh yeah, yeah no, I'm not saying yeah, anything yeah, bad about. Yeah. I just think yeah. that, that and he is a, and he is a good operator. He is a good yep. operator. But yeah, Chris was. Uh, Chris, me and Chris have joked about that time and time again. But yeah, I, I still laugh about it. It's funny. He might. He might have. Is either you, Wade, or him was my first. Uh, no, it wasn't Wade because I didn't subscribe to Wade until. Is your you or him was my first subscription? The first person I ever subscribed to. Is that right? Yeah, because your original channel was Clement SHC, which was Simon Harris Construction, yep. right? Yep. Yep. Uh, and you carried that on for a year. I remember. I'll never forget. I think there was one video we had of loading a great big tree in the back of that dump trailer <laughs> yeah. I got, and it got like a thousand yeah. views, and we were like all kinds of excited. Yeah, we thought it was the coolest thing. And then we'd go to Wade's channel, he'd have like five thousand views. We're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> And now, now you look back today, uh, there was one video out of all those that went viral, though. Yeah, it was you back in that little short dump trailer. Short dump trailer. You got like 250,000 views because the world said you couldn't back a truck. Yeah. Um, I think I proved them wrong and, yet. Man, mm-hmm. you know. It looks like you took about a four-year break in there. I took a, I took a long break. Yeah. Well, that's where I was going with all yeah. this. So, yeah. so basically, you were you filmed up to the time you left. Yes. And honestly, for those videos being the old videos, I think a lot of them are filmed on the Hero 3. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I don't know if you didn't have smartphones at the time. No, no, I don't um, know. I had the old, no, I did not have a smartphone. Yeah. Um, so you left, did your thing. In 2018, whenever I shut down Simon Harris Construction and shut down Simon Harris Development and downsized everything, Wade was on my butt hard about starting YouTube. And you start YouTube, and you start YouTube, and you start YouTube. I thought, well, if I'm ever going to do it, <clears throat> now's the time to do it. So, uh, well, some I, of your first videos were working on Wade's, on Brutus, weren't they? No, my first videos was my very first video was on the bulldozer to his side. No on kidding. On the yeah. okay. Or on the creek, yeah. yeah. Um, and working in the creek down there, Howard, Justin Howard's at Branchville, and then, yeah. which was funny because the day I hit 100,000 subscribers, I was working in that same damn spot. <laughs> He's working on Jason Emmons. Right, I mean, right there. Hundred thousand subscribers. He's just right there in the same form off from the cricket first hilarious. video. Oh, that's <laughs> weird. But uh, but yeah, I started in on that, and then uh, I got to rolling pretty damn good for some reason. I don't know why. And then you kind of come. That's where me and you met at the market. Yeah. Come back together because if you yeah. go back and watch on my channel, you were probably in a third of my videos that weren't filming. Yeah. I'd say that's right. Was, yeah. I think the first time I started, yeah. well, I guess I could go back and look. But I think it's when we were spreading millions down there, maybe, at the market. I can't remember. Yeah. I, that was your, I was just looking here four years ago, spreading millions with a John Deere 120. Yeah. Yeah. It was your first video four years ago. <clears throat> so long story short, me and you kind of reunited. You were still doing the full-time firefighter thing, but you yeah. were working for me pretty much most of the days you had off. Yeah. If, if I had a day off Monday through Friday, I was, yeah. And then that transitioned into you getting your YouTube channel rejuvenated. Yeah. Which is where it changed names to Captain Cleman. Yep. And you kind of start doing your Yeah. Doing your own thing from there. So Yeah. Now look at us. Now look at us. Still don't know what we're doing. Having fun. Going well. We're having we're fun, man. Having, having a good time figuring it out. <sighs> yeah, it's uh I don't know, it's been quite uh quite the crazy. But ride. uh what you say in the past Six months a year, you probably haven't worked for Dirt Perfect for a while, have you? No, it's been a while. Because you've just been so busy on your own stuff yeah, right now. Yeah, the projects. And, you know, I mean, I was working for you, for Dirt Perfect, um, for fun money on the side, yeah. basically. You know, it was just a little bit extra cash. And then um, I built up enough of a following on the channel uh, that YouTube kind of replaced that fun money. Yeah, you. I mean, you. if... if if I need something, I know I can call you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, there's still a random day or two you hear you. Hell, the biggest thing you do that's help anymore is you work in Evansville and you pick up. Right. Pick up parts. <laughs> <laughs> parts runner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But, uh, <laughs> so what do you, Captain Kleeman channel's going on all cylinders now. Yeah. 75,000 subscribers. Isn't that crazy? 573 what, videos. What did you have whenever you started back up? Wasn't it right under 1,000, like 800 or something? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And I still debate. I, still I remember I had 18,000 whenever you started yours. Okay. That's crazy. It looks you know. like you had several projects going on. Yeah. We got a lot, a lot of projects going on. And some pretty cool stuff coming up. Do you? Cool. Maybe. We'll see. Dad is joking. 
no one's gonna understand this, but you'll understand it, and I'll backtrack a little bit. Dad was joking. We just had Thanksgiving, and my my nephews are down, and and uh, Dad was telling because he's all, he's always bragging on me. God love him, even though I don't have a lot that's brag worthy. <laughs> Still alive. I don't. Stuff. I don't have a lot that's brag worthy, but he's always bragging on me. He's like, yeah, he just bought the Derby Gymnasium. He said, he doesn't have a fancy open roof. I said, well, let's see what the winter brings. <laughs> <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> That's a very, very true statement. Yeah. Yeah. It might. We don't know. It that. might open uh, up. It might open up on us. Don't tell them what you pay for it. You might be disappointed. <laughs> yeah. 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 But no. So yeah. I know we, the previous owner. <laughs> yeah. We've got um, a lot of projects going on with YouTube Yacht, which is all funded by YouTube Revenue. Yeah. And then... Just all the side things, buying property, making your, trails, making roads. Your 555, uh, always improving on it. Oh, always improving on it. Um, I don't have a lot of hydraulics on it right now, though, so that's, you got to figure that out, especially since some of the hydraulics sent down a third function hydraulic kit, you know. <laughs> kind of in the grind on that situation right now. <laughs> and the little John Deere's hanging in there. It's, yeah. <laughs> Man, that thing takes a beating. Oh, I can't believe it. You know, yeah. I have people tell me all the time that I need to get a new John Deere tractor to replace that. It wouldn't hold up to half that stuff. Yeah, there you go. One, it wouldn't hold up, and there's nothing different. I know. The only thing that's different is it's electric over hydraulic. Yeah. Everything I've, else uh, is the same. The lift capacity is the same. The horsepower is the mm-hmm. same. I think you can... I kind of got them stuck on those little tractors. They are. Oh, yeah. So you've got three of them now, don't you? Mm-hmm. Little 55 series? They're awesome little tractors. They are. They are. I have people all the time. It's like, well, if that breaks down, what would you buy? I buy 955. <laughs> 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 Yeah. They got a, I mean, we're not the only ones that think that. They got a huge following online. Uh huh. Yeah. I and mean, there's a lot of people that. They're just bulletproof track. Yeah. yeah. Pretty they're simple. so simple. Yeah. I mean, they're basically, a, yeah. And they're, they're, they were actually built by John Deere. A lot of people think they're EMR tractors, but they were built in Wisconsin. They just got a Yanmar motor in them. The Yanmar. Yeah. The Yanmar diesel. I'm really surprised the loader holds up on them as much as that, you guys well you got to look at the loader design on those things yeah. so the way they've got it that that loader bracket goes it's in one is just regular steel so mm-hmm. it's not a big cast bracket but it's welded in the frame it's welded into the frame mm-hmm. i mean whatever this side takes gets transferred to the other side and like it's on steel so there's yeah. a little bit of flex you know those new cast brackets uh-huh. there's no room for movement, movement on, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're breaking bolts all the time or breaking the whole damn mount yeah depending on what you're doing with oh uh, so <laughs> This is going to be a three-hour conversation. We're not going to get anything accomplished. <laughs> I am excited. I'm another Pepsi. <laughs> Captain Cleveland. What's up? Do you want to elaborate on this name a little bit here for people who don't know? Well, it's... Yeah. People get mad about it. You know, I've had people... You're a captain on the fire department. Yeah, I am not. <laughs> I am not. Well, this kind of goes back to... And maybe I'm going to get off basing a little bit, but... Um, whenever I started my channel, I did not want to use my business name. Right. I wanted something I could brand. Right. Um, well, and your your first channel name Perfect just didn't fit. You know, you need to have. That was not my first channel name. My first channel name was Dirtball TV. Oh, I'm glad you changed it. Uh, well, I think I Dirt, Dirt Daddy. Daddy. No. That was going to be the second one. Dirt Daddy. Oh gosh. Well, I'm glad you changed that too. <laughs> <laughs> So how many names did you go through? <laughs> I believe Captain Clinton was the third one, but I could not tell you what the first two were. Yeah. Um, I just remember when I started out. I remember me and you brainstorming for like. Oh, we yeah. did. We did. Because YouTube gives you three chances in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And there Because you knew you had to change it from Clayman SHC because that made absolutely no sense no more, and nor, nor could you brand that. Although if I still had it, I'd probably just change the acronym. Just change what it stood for every year, you know, <laughs> just mess with people. But the, the YouTube wanted or suggested short and catchy yeah something people could remember so if mm-hmm. they wanted to tell somebody it was easy for them to remember to tell somebody yeah. then we went through several things and then we kind of started doing or i started doing the the youtube got project the boat rental cabin um so we just kind of came up with captain Clement, like a boat captain was yeah. the idea um ironically we really don't work on that project i don't know no but Maybe it's a just, month's worth of my videos is, yeah. is based I mean, on the, project. the whole premise of the name was kind of a joke yeah like dirt perfect i'm not perfect it's a joke you know what i mean that was kind of the whole the whole premise behind it it's catchy you remember it and uh it's just a brand it's just that's all it is just a brand yeah people take it serious i've had messages people like that's stolen valor i was like i don't i tell people all the time i'm a lieutenant you know Mm -hmm. my actual rank's lieutenant i'm not trying to trick anybody here i'm not going up to admin like hey my pay's wrong (laughs) you know (laughs) 
we're not doing anything like that. But well, well, long story short, a, they can argue. Brand. I mean, everybody says I stole my name from Dude Perfect. Yeah. And I didn't even know he existed until I started doing YouTube. Oh, I know. It's, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, If everybody looks far, hard enough, you're going to find another channel that's similar yeah. names. Yeah. Kind of There's, and YouTube don't really restrict doubling up on names. No, they don't. Yeah. No. Somebody else could. Oh, man. I should say that. Somebody else could start a channel called Captain Clean. Yeah. Another chance they're going to get the same exposure the original one does is yeah. probably slim to none. But, um, but you can have duplicate names. That's There's 14 happen. former Chris's. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. a bunch of them out there. Yeah. yeah. Which that's a little bit more of a common name. Yeah, it's just a common name. Yeah, yeah. So let's, uh, now that everybody kind of knows the history of how we got where we're at, let's transition a little bit and just talk about YouTube in general, pros and cons. Your Because your channel is completely different than my channel. Well, oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, your channel's based around your business. Yeah. And my channel's based around your hobbies. Based Home, around my hobbies, I guess. Homestead or hobbies, Homestead, yeah. 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 I, man, there's a, there's a ton of pros. I mean, one's just the people you meet. Yeah. You know that for sure. We've met some fantastic people. Um, and we can dive into that in a second here, but we'll start with the cons just so we can end with the pros because I, I like that style. You know what I mean? The, the biggest con, it does it's, take... It's your podcast, Cleveland. We'll just does, sit back and listen. <laughs> it is. This is a podcast brought to you by Dirt Perfect. That is D-I-R-T. <laughs> this is on a few points from Perfect. Yeah, I know, but you're, don't you sponsor it? Do you have a sponsor stick? I guess technically I do since I paid for all the equipment on the yeah. table. You yeah. sponsor it and you write it off as an advertisement. And sure, I like that. Yeah. 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 Um, the, the, so the, the biggest cons, the two biggest cons, one, it, it does take time. It's lots of time. It takes lots of time. The filming well, aspect. Well, I'm going to argue with you here a little bit. He's going to. Phil can't even be on his own podcast. I know. <laughs> the filming's easy. The filming's easy. The editing. The editing takes time. Um, the editing, for me, the uploading takes time. But the editing you do in another job. <laughs> the editing, I just, you know, I don't, no, no. It would, mm-hmm. you know, if I had lots of time, I would. But I don't do that. <laughs> I edit at my house every day, so, every time. Understood. But I think it comes on. down to the style of editing. This is true. You say it takes a lot of time. But you are at the mercy of the amount of time you put into it. Oh, that's, yeah, 100%, 100%. So you can let it consume you, and I think it does consume some people and yeah. runs them. Yeah, it can. Um, and then you go the other extreme to where you don't give it enough breath to keep going. But the pace of the channel is 100% at your discretion. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I guess that's what I want to point out as far as, I don't want people to think to start a YouTube channel, they got to dedicate 20 hours a week to it. No, I mean, whatever you... Well, it's like anything. You get what you put into it. Right. Get out of it right, what you right, put right. into it. Um, so for me, uh, I want a lot of growth, so I put a lot of time into it. Right. Um, but I think it's a good balance. I think I do okay balance. It was, so you put out was it three videos or two videos a week? Two videos a week on the main channel, one video a week on the side channel. I mean, just ballparking on average, how many hours do you think you put into it a week? Editing-wise, probably... I'm going to say this now. It's not going to sound like that much. Probably about 15 hours editing was. See, I put out a video every other day. I probably put less than eight hours a week in editing. Is that right? Yeah. So, I guess, and then there's probably people that put out one video a week and put 40 hours in editing it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, there, I don't know if you want to say there's different tiers. <laughs> But there's different. There's not one system that fits all. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, and that's. I mean, that's part of the. That's part of the beauty of YouTube. You know, everything's different. Every channel's different. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you don't like it, you don't have to tell us. You can just move on to find. You the next video one. all your own clips. Yes. Can you imagine editing with all the clowns he's got videoing for him, putting yeah, them all I, together? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got a system. <laughs> I got my, a system. Well, I think, that's my system. I think that's the thing. You have to have a system. Yeah. Rule number one of Dirt Perfect's camera. If you're videoing, it better not be over two minutes. And if it is, you better have a damn good explanation. <laughs> all right. Okay, you guys remember that now. Right. <laughs> I've got that on the checklist. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first time I've heard that rule. <laughs> Miss it at the company safety meeting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, there's really not a lot of cons, honestly. Uh, Comments, but just repeated stupid. I don't know. If, what's what's the man, one comment that drives you nuts? Uh, When's Lieutenant Dan going to be done? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even on my channel, that comment drives me crazy. Why is there a spoon on the muffler? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. 
Comments, just generic, like the style of comment that drives me crazy. That'll never work. Is, that, you know what, I don't even care. I actually like that comment now. I enjoy it. Challenge me. Yeah. Tell me it won't work. Yeah. Just because you can't get it to work doesn't mean I can't get it yeah. to work. You know, that's the thing. Um, the, like the type of comment that drives me crazy is the asking a question that was directly answered in that video. Yeah, yeah. You know, because I just put all this time into filming and editing. And you can I, at least watch it for you I guys. try to do my best to predict questions that'll be asked and be like, okay, they're going to want to know this. I'm going to address it quickly. Mm -hmm. And then they'll ask, and I'll be like, come on, man. Yeah. You know, um, the other, I will tell you, the number one question, and I don't know how you feel about this, but the question that bugs me the most, somebody made it the other day, and they haven't made it in a while, probably because I haven't worked for it in a while, but somebody made it there on two videos ago. They said, we have Dirt Perfect to thank for your channel. And it burns my ass every time. Because <laughs> it's like, you know, I know, I started on his... Uh, he gave me some huge shout outs and uh -huh. don't get me wrong it was definitely a big boost to the channel but yeah. we've talked about this that you can shout somebody out as much as you want if they don't have the content to back it up it doesn't matter it don't matter yeah. people make them big if it wasn't for dirt perfect like, oh. I think I even told you that in the beginning is like get six or ten videos up there so if somebody if I do shout you out somebody comes over there oh yeah they got more yeah. than you know let them stay there for a while and watch a couple videos and hopefully yeah. they'll yeah. stick around because if you just post one video and I shout you out yeah you're going to be forgotten. Yeah. You know yeah, I, mean? yeah absolutely. I don't remember exactly how it went. I think you had a dozen or so videos posted and we did a live or something. I, yeah, I, do, I think that is. Yeah. I think so, yeah. But, you know, I can shout you out all you want, but if you don't put the work into the channel, it's worthless. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. I don't put any work into your channel. Yeah. yeah. I know. That's what I was like. My reply was, yeah, because he films it, edits it, and shoots yeah. all the scenes for me. No. So. Yeah. But, it's, probably, I mean, it's not I'll like... Be, I, I probably get, grabbed your camera and maybe filmed... 30 minutes total of all your videos you posted. That's just because I was hanging around doing something. Yeah. and But, I mean, i got to thank you because it's definitely a boost to the channel in the beginning. But there's a point where it's just it's everybody's channels themselves. Yeah. Yep. And we've done, you know, everybody's done collaborations and shout-outs. And I don't think they bring as many subscriber boost as people expect especially the bigger you get the less effective that becomes yeah i mean most people yeah because everybody's already crossed over yeah. anyways yeah i gotta do a video the first video i did with let's dig i may have got like four or five thousand subscribers i did a video with let's dig now i can't even tell the difference in my subscribers well especially because a lot of times the collaborations we do are with people that are in the same yeah same kind of market around the world right. so yeah. Yeah. Well, if you do a collaboration with let's dig now i mean he, they've done seen it two months prior before <laughs> <laughs> they've seen your way to point out the history channel <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That goes back to me managing time. Like I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, know, I haven't made a good video in three weeks. Yeah. Which you know exactly. what? There's going to be one posted tomorrow. Well, that's, yeah. And that's I think somewhere. that's the difference between our, yeah. our two channels. And like yeah. I said, every channel is different. Is yours is based around work. So you have the ability to film content every day. Well, yeah. not every day, but yeah. every day yeah. you're working. Yeah. Whereas I'm only filming. I got a lot film. more opportunities. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to film my days off. Yeah. You know, there's, there's every once in a while, there's a comment that really just irks your chain because it's just so ignorant yeah you know that yeah. just it just like how can you be that stupid but over the years to your point become really good at predicting comments that's what the comment generators come in yeah with. like if you put a camera underneath a vehicle you're guaranteed to have 50 comments about what's wrong with your vehicle oh yeah guaranteed yeah you know what guaranteed. i mean guaranteed if you run an excavator and you take a stick and scratch the side glass where it sounds like it's screeching, you'll have a hundred comments you need to grease that. Oh yeah. yeah. If you back Bubba Dump up a hill and you take a quart of oil and pour it over the front diff as you're backing up the hill so it drips down in front of the camera, 500 comments. If you take and let the air out of the tire before you haul a big load of dirt and you film it up close, 300 comments. People really want you to know if your you tires are low. If you take a spoon and hang it from the flapper on a dozer, the comments are endless. Yep. Unplug a tail light on a dump truck. Unplug a tail light on a dump truck. Every uh, every time we get, because all the time, stuff like that. And you know I'm here, right? Right. Like, you know I, I filmed it, <laughs> I edited it, I watched it, <laughs> and I pulled the camera off. Like, yeah. And I, most of their intentions are good intentions. Yes, they they're are. just trying to help. They're being, yeah. they're being nice. But like, I know my tire's low. I know it's low, guys. I can see so it. So I've just like totally... I just don't have time to deal with it. I don't have time to deal with it. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. I've just well. totally flipped the script and like if I know it, it'll get... Like we're putting the brake calipers together on Bubba Dump one day. I purposely put one in backwards. Yeah. I thought, well, let's see if anybody notices it. Yeah. There it is. 100 comments. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, you mentioned oh, flat yeah. tires. It cracks me up. 
I know you ratchet strapped that air compressor to the 555 tire <laughs> and worked with it, airing it out, and the air compressor's in the tire going around. You want to tell the other story about a very similar compressor? Well, that's how I knew that compressor was so durable. Because <laughs> <laughs> I unintentionally did that one day with the C8500. It was really it was flopping around, huh? I was like, what, what is that noise? <laughs> I, look, I look in the mirror, and there's that compressor hanging off the dear life, smacking the pavement every rotation. Well, Boom, 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 boom. Like, oh shoot! He comes, he comes walking down the hill with it in a box. Uh... <laughs> he just got it, dude. He's like, check this thing out. I was like, oh, that's pretty neat, you know. I just trashed it. Oh wow! Oh wow! <laughs> uh, bought him another one. I shoved all the pieces in a box and sent it back to old Dewalt for warranty. You know? I don't know what's wrong with this. No. Bro- broken shipment. <laughs> yeah. uh, what were we? So what was your pros? Uh? You Pros, it, well, the people he meets awesome. We do. We meet a, a ton of people. Like-minded people. Or like-minded, like-minded people. Like-minded people. And not only just content creators, but subscribers. Yeah. You know, and it, that's just awesome. It is and, awesome. I mean, people are definitely number one. Opportunities. There's a lot of opportunities. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way without YouTube I'd be building a boat. Yeah. Or buying mm-hmm. the land that we bought. Or but, running a DL550. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Or oh. having clapped out backhoe that works every now and then. <laughs> Never. What <laughs> opportunity about you do? It's, uh, I think some people, I don't want to say this, some people think that we have a film crew following us around and we make millions. Oh, yeah. Which is not true. We no. are, if you guys ever meet us in person, you figure out really quick we're no different than anybody else out here. I had a guy comment, he's like, uh, I hope when you're successful, you're still running this old equipment. Buddy, I'm not running this old equipment because I want to. <laughs> that's what I can afford. Yeah. If I can afford something new and shiny that just turns on with the key, that's what I'm going to buy. But I yeah, can't afford yeah. it. So expect some new equipment. Sometime. Yeah. At some point in time. <laughs> yeah. The the people, the opportunities is probably number one. I mean, you and I have both had enough success. We've enjoyed some financial gains off of it, which don't hurt either. No, it's not. Yeah. It's it help. helps keep you motivated a little bit, but YouTube's always a moving target, man. Mm-hmm. Like, one month your channel's doing us, and the next month oh, yeah. the channel's in the dump, and you just gotta stick with it. It's my best. Well, I mean, Wade gave us really good advice, and he said YouTube comes and goes in waves, and, yeah. you know, ride them when you can, and that's, that's what you gotta do. But people act like a lot of times, too, you know, we'll do partnerships, or obviously the revenue we get, and they're like, well, it must be nice. Well, it's a job. Yeah. You're putting time into it. I'm buying stuff to do this. Cameras aren't cheap. Mm-hmm. Microphones aren't cheap. Editing software's so what, not cheap. So what is your check on sponsorships? Because I'm, you do more sponsorship than stuff than I do, probably, to be honest with you. I do some very basic partnerships. I don't do a lot of paid partnerships, mainly because they want... They have too many requirements. Seven page contract. They got big old contracts. They want you to say specific things about and I'm not I'm not that I'm not gonna lie to people about equipment. Mm-hmm. Most of my partnerships like with um <clears throat> with Vever or with Summit, it's send me the product, I'll use it. Yeah. If I like it, I'll say good things. If I don't like it, I'll say where things can be improved. I'm not gonna sell something to people, yeah. but I will present your product and then they can make the decision. I think my best example of that is uh, and I'm just gonna call this company out because at this point I don't care. Is speed binders. Yeah. So in the very beginning, whenever I had speed binders, speed binders was my very first sponsorship. Steve hire. done good. Yeah. Steve Heline was the guy that owned it. He was awesome. And it was my very first sponsorship deal I ever got. Steve contacted me up. He said, Mike, I'd like to send you four binders. I want your honest opinion on how they work. And if you just don't care, call my name on the channel when you use them. Yep. I said, we'll send them down. If I like them, we'll use them. And we'll go on. And we did. We liked them. We still love them today. Still yeah. use them today. Yeah. Um, Steve and Steve was very fortunate, and I'm very thankful this happened for Steve. But Steve was able to sell the company. I would like to think one of the contributing factors to selling that company was the success he had advertising on the channel. Yeah. You're talking the, millions of views. Yeah. yeah. One of the videos we did went crazy. <clears throat> you did a couple of TikToks that went crazy. Yeah. Um, and Steve straight up told me he got a lot of sales from that. Steve ended up selling the company. This new company sees <clears throat> no value in what we do, has no interest in working with me. And whenever Steve told them, you need to pay attention to Mike, they sent me a contract for a $200 binder. Oh, wow. They sent me a two-page contract telling me I had to do three trucking videos a month. 
I had to call him by name so many times. I had to link this. I had to do that. I had to do this. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. Well, like, I call him by name every time, which I don't run for him much. But when I do use him, I was like, we still like the old ones, but the new ones, we don't know anything about. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so, yeah. I got people sending me three hundred thousand dollars pieces of equipment. Yeah. And I have none of these requirements. Right. No contracts. And so, you right. can't trust me to talk to you about one a year. And then the other thing is, I'm in business. I don't wake up in the morning and leave that door and go, "Oh man, I gotta go film a trucking video today. I'm gonna change everything. Do it." No. Exactly. No. Yeah. If I leave that door that day, and I need to go truck. I'll use your damn binders yeah. and I'll call them by yeah. name and I'll tell everybody how I like them because we've been using them for a long time now. Yeah. And I still yeah. like yeah. them. I'm not going to leave that door and go do what you need me to do. I'm going to do what I have to do. Content. Yeah. Make up content. Right. I ain't making up yeah. shit. And, um, of course, and obviously I told them no, which is why you guys have probably noticed over the years I don't call speed binders by their name. We still like the product. We still yeah. use the product. Yeah. And I might even buy some on the side. But I sure as hell ain't going to support them because it is yep. what it is at this point. Yeah. All these major manufacturers we work with, Hyundai, Volvo, and Case, they're awesome. They trust us to do the right stuff with their equipment. They're very minimalistic contracts. Um, I've been approached by other ones that want you to read cue cards. Yeah. You don't want me reading cue cards. Go hire an actor for that. Well, that's, that's why I try to tell. Because you know how it is. You have companies that approach you almost daily. Yeah. And they'll pay you. You know, I'll have a company come up and they'll say, okay, for $3,000. So... All those emails we get, and then you go watch their channels. I know me and you're thinking of one of them in particular. You can go down the email list, and you can go down his videos. Oh, I know. <laughs> and it's I know. just one for one for one. I know. I know. And whatever. So, yeah, some channels just turn into sales channels, which yeah. it works for them good. But, you know, they'll, they'll be like, hey, we'll give you 3000 4000 whatever dollars for a two-minute mention. This is what you have to say. And you're like, well, here's the deal. Nobody wants to be sold anything. Yeah. They're not coming here to be sold anything. Yeah. It's like I or, said, they, they, organic they, placement is the best exactly. way to sell on YouTube. Yeah. It organic needs to be placement. genuine, and that's yeah. what it is. When we're using, when I'm using that Vever stuff, I'm using it how I would use it. Yeah, yeah, All right. It's no different than the, you know we got a case bulldoze in our possession right now. The only thing I'm doing different is I'm climbing in their machine instead of mine. Right. Either way, I'm climbing in a bulldozer. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And then people actually seeing that piece of equipment move used in a real life job site. I call it in the wild. That's <laughs> in the wild. <laughs> well, it's not. In captivity, it's not, the it it's not in a captivity yeah. behind a chain link fence at a dealership. It's yeah. out in the wild. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? That goes, uh, and then these companies let me speak freely about them. Go back and look at my review videos. I mean, everything's, I don't love every aspect there is about them. Yep. Yeah. But I'm very respectful about how I go about it. But I want you guys to know if you buy one of these machines, be aware of these. What I don't like, you may like. So maybe it's not a problem. Yeah. Maybe it's just my preference. Well, yeah. I think that's what people want. I don't think they want sales channels yeah. and I, you can look at that on those channels you can see channels that have a million subscribers and their videos only get 20 30,000 views I can think of that guy too you know what I mean you know exactly what I'm talking exactly about exactly who you're talking about um, it's, it's a different guy than the other guy it's a different guy than the other guy but I think they get the same emails <laughs> probably <do. laughs> so yeah it's a thing to balance but that I mean you can take the channel whatever direction you want. You know? yeah. so well, that's channel. just it. It's it's your it's your channel. It's my channel. It's his channel. Whatever we decide to do with our channel, don't mean it's right or wrong. And I don't have to agree with it or disagree with it. You know, uh, Tractor Time with Tim and myself have had lengthy conversations about this because we have totally different opinions on how we deal with sponsors and vendors and stuff. But, and what I got to remind Tim, and you're kind of in between us, I guess. Is Tim at YouTube's for a living? Right, right. I excavate for a living and YouTube on the side. Right. You YouTube for a hobby. Yep. So I think it kind of depends on none of us are wrong. Yeah. It's just what, what fits. You got you to go with what fits with what. Yeah. I don't have time to be reading cue cards or checking a contract or right. filming a trucking video for the hell of it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Right. It's what. You know, I would probably I would probably meet every qualification in that speed binder's request. But I ain't got time to make sure I mean I'm not gonna sit there and double I'm check. I'm not gonna it. sit there and double check it. Like Yeah. And go back and refilm it no, if you ain't. I'll just, just, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I messed that one. Let's go load here, it back yeah, up all again. Here's the reality of it. The time I spent reading that contract and double checking, I've been money ahead to pay two hundred dollars for the binder and I have to worry about a damn thing. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, for the value. Uh, another one was hyperlights. Oh gosh, they're ridiculous. They wanted to give me lights for this, and then they wanted me to film a whole video on it, mention their names this many times. I said, well, how much are the lights? It's like $800. I said, oh, just ship them to me. Yeah. 
No, here's the con- no. I don't think you understand. Yeah. I'm going to pay for the lights, and then I'm going to say what I want to say yeah. when I want to say it, how yeah. I want to say it. Yeah. I'll, you know, they never would ship me the lights. Really, really. They wanted to send me lights, and they're like a 15 minute dedicated video. Yeah. How do you expect me to make a 15 minute video no. on lights? I'm always going. I will make a video on building a pole barn, and 30 seconds of it will be installing yeah. your lights. And I'll mention where I got them from, and I'll tell you where I like them or not. But yeah. I'm not. This is not. What is it? QRTV or whatever. Yeah, Q- QVC. Yeah. QVC. <laughs> yeah, QVC. <laughs> it's, not, it's not QVC yeah. YouTube. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, not. You're the same way, and Chris is the same way. We know how hard we work for our money. Yep. I'm not going to push something if it's not worth it. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. This is, I'm just not going to do that. Yeah. Uh, speed binders is the best example I have of that because it is something we use regular. It is something that's easy for us to advertise. It is something that's organically placed. Yeah. In that company, it's hard telling the benefits they could give out of sending us four hundred dollars of the binders, six hundred dollars of the binder. Their, their return on investment is so minimal. But it's not for me to argue that, it's for them to figure it out. And I don't mean to I don't mean to crap on speed binders here. Okay. It's just that's just the one that's that just an example. It's right. just an example. There's there's many other companies that have had the same approach. And I get it, they're trying to protect themselves, but if you want to protect yourself, do your research and align yourself with trust, the right people. Trust the people that's, you got. Don't take yeah. long to research us on YouTube and figure out how we yeah. how we present stuff. You Here's know what I mean? my portfolio. Here's yeah, it's, it's, out there. it's all out there. My <laughs> resume <laughs> is for the public to see. Yeah, that's right. Uh, there you go. Yeah, the resume is for the public to see. Uh, so, yeah. well, Captain, we'll wrap this up. Same. What uh, what's what's uh, what's coming up on the Captain Cleveland channel? What's exciting and new? Well, we're doing the Ford dump truck right now. Cut the other one in half, got the bed off. We're going to try to put that 460 in one in the other. No idea what I'm doing. And it's not in my shop, folks. It's not in your shop. <laughs> it's not in your shop. Uh, no idea what I'm doing. doing. But we'll figure it out. That's kind of the fun of the channel. And then we, Captain Clement just bought its new world headquarters. So Is that what we're calling this? The world headquarters? The world, Captain Clement's world headquarters. I'd tell you the size, but it could change daily. You know, you just don't know the actual... Depends on what Mother Nature brings you. Yeah. Just depends on what Mother Nature brings me. And if Home Depot brings the lumber in time, you know what I mean? If they don't bring the lumber in time. Has, uh, have you released any of that on your channel yet? Not yet. This won't come out for a couple of weeks. I was, see. it'll be mid-December when we uh, start. Oh, you're that far out already too, huh? We, well, no, just when I actually start. Yeah, start filming. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it'll be mid-December when the video comes yeah. out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We're going to start doing some stabilization, saving a little history and trying to. That it's not so, safe to get on the roof to paint Captain Cleman on it yet? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Boy, but if she collapses, then you know I'm doing it. Yeah. I'm gonna, just so the neighbor says. <laughs> that thing falls on the ground, I go out there and just roll a big YouTube logo on. Easy. Cleman's the first question was, why are you selling it so cheap? I said, because I don't want to own it when it falls down. <laughs> yeah. My next call next week is to Southern Indian Power. Like, hey, go ahead and take him lines off for me. You don't mind. Jeez, we don't pull your pole over. But then I was looking, I was like, I might need those there to hold it up. I don't know. It might be a, a god wire on it, yeah. Hey, that piece of property's been good to us over the years. Yeah. yeah. I've owned it twice. Well, we've got, I've got three plans. So if the first one doesn't work out, we'll go to plan B. Nobody knows about my way. When did you me. buy it? Uh, would have been probably 11, 2011. I think, I mean, in the mid-90s, I played basketball in there, so. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. I've been trying yeah. to find some old photos and stuff. I don't have no photos. Uh, Joe Hall has some. Does he? Yeah. yeah I've seen it. But uh, yeah, I had it. I, it would have been 2011 or 2012. Yeah. I've had it for over 10 years. We're going to try to save it. We got, we got some places. It's, cool. it's a cool place. Yeah. There's a lot of local cool history there. That's for sure. All right. Cleveland, thanks for coming over. My pleasure. Yeah. yeah. I guess just to recap real quick, I'm sure you get this question all the time, and I do too. Why aren't you working for me? Why aren't you on my channel? This, that, and the other. Long story short, you don't we, pay as much as YouTube. Well, that's the that's, <laughs> but we still do a lot of stuff together. It's just not on camera. Right, right. You know well, I mean? that's like I try to explain to people. I could work for you, which was fun, and yeah. I did enjoy it. Or I could work for me on my own property and make the same on the videos. Yeah. 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 Make yeah. content off of it, yeah. But either way, if you need help, you know to call me. If I need help, Vice I versa. Absolutely. So. It's not like we hate each other. No. There's <laughs> people like to dream up drama going yeah. on. There's, yeah. <laughs> There's uh, yep. you want to come put some field tile in? Uh, no, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to get our next guest lined up here. He said he's nervous. Oh boy, who you got coming in? Uh, that's top secret. Oh, okay, because he's gonna go before you on the list. Oh, so yeah. we're all uh, we're like doing backwards we're stuff. We're out here. of order. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got some big questions to answer. 
Yeah. But they're probably yeah. already been answered because they went before me. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> the magic of YouTube. The magic of YouTube. <laughs> All right. Well, Captain Man, we've known each other for a long time. It's been a hell of a good ride. We've been good friends. Yep. And uh, appreciate you taking the time to tell your side of the story. Well, I enjoyed it. This is fun. I appreciate you having me. So. Hopefully, it turns out better than it did last season. Oh, it'll be. I enjoyed the last one. I had fun. Oh, well, we all did, but nobody's seen you or heard you. <laughs> That's their loss. Every once in a while, you'd see his head just pop out. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, uh, it's like I said, this is episode three. You guys will see. We got uh, several other guests lined up. Yep. I think uh, we still hope to get Lord Muck on here. I've been talking to Andrew a little bit about getting him on here. Um, We've got a few topics we're going to discuss ourselves. Yep. If you yep. guys have any ideas, be f feel free to comment down below. Yep. Let us know, and uh, yeah, thanks, Captain Clayman. We'll link your channel down below if I haven't found you yet. Awesome, and that's dirt perfect. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. We're out.